I'm present. Good morning. Chair, Mr. Malamakia. Morning, Chair. Morning, colleagues. I'm present. Good morning. Chair, Mr. Mumbayani. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. I'm present. Thank you very much. Good morning. Chair, Ms. Mutahum. Chase is on the platform, Chair. Mr. Thring. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Chair, Dr. Tswaku. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm here on the platform. Good morning. I haven't been feeling well, but I'm back now. Oh, okay. I'm glad you're feeling better. Mr. Mull, the chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, all. I'm present. Good morning. Chair, Mr. Cuthbert, Chair. Morning, Chairperson. Good morning. Chair, Prince Burns, Ngamasi, Chair. Good morning. Chair, that's all members on the platform, Chair. Thank you. Can we have the agenda, please? Thank you very much. Can we just see from the committee if there are any apologies? Um, Chair, we have the apology from Mr. McPherson, Chair, who's on party business. He submitted it last week already. Thanks. Yes, I saw Only that. Only apology, all are present, Chair. Thank you. Um, then can we have a move and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda as tabled? Members, we need to adopt our agenda. Ms. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I move for adoption of the agenda as, uh... as tabled. Yeah, thank you. Honorable Mbiani. Chairperson, uh, good morning once again. I support the proposal for that option of the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our agenda being duly adopted. Today we will look at the, and consider as a portfolio committee the first draft of the budgetary review and recommendation report. Uh, thank you very much. Committee Secretary, can you take us through, please? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, we are looking at the first draft of the budget review and recommendation report, Chair. Chair, just to state up front that the focus of the report is on the DTIC's annual report, Chair, uh, um, um, going forward. Chair, we distributed the report to members yesterday, and we requested that members submit um, concluding remarks on the matter, and we've received from this morning from the African National Congress and from the Democratic Alliance, some inputs which we'll speak to later during the process, Chair. Chair, just to proceed, Chair, with the introduction, it's a introduction that will be, uh, um, um, will be developed later, Chair, and we will include that at the, um, at, before the final adoption of the BRRR report um, on the matter, Chair. Chair, Mr. Kappa raised his hand, Chair. Honorable Cuthbert. Thanks very much, Chair, and sorry to interject, Andre. Uh, Chair, we've obviously submitted our inputs as parties. Could we not consider this report itself to be read and move to the concluding remarks and recommendations? Because we would have all had to have considered the report in order to develop concluding remarks as well as recommendations. So I think we kind of, uh, you know, duplicating the effort that would have okay. been done in reading the report prior. If that's fine with you, of course, and other members. Yes, I let me see if there's any opposition to that proposal. 
um, that you have worked through as parties, the 41 pages of the report, and that we can go straight to conclusions. Is there any opposition to that proposal from Honorable Cuthbert? Honorable Chair. Honorable Tswaku. No, thank you very much, sir. No, sir, I'm, I'm still actually going through that. I apologize. And uh, I think I said, uh, I didn't even ask Andre that, <clears throat> um, just to request that, can I just later today in, uh, include my, put my, uh, my, my, my recommendations or, okay. um, um, yeah, because it's been a very uh, long report. So I've been going through it line by line and see all the stuff, but I've not like, you no, know, I've tried to really conclude it, but, um, um, I've, my, okay. I've really been able to do that. So I've asked uh, the chair for indulgence and maybe at least just give me a bit of time then I'll, I'll submit it. It's actually went to our researchers as well. Okay. Uh, tell me, uh, um, committee secretary, would it be fine for, for the EFF to hand in their conclusions by the end of business today? Chair, nothing prevents that, Chair, because the committee only will finally consider the report. Yes. Um, next week, and we before, if we receive it today, Chair, we will then distribute the concluding remarks as part of the final report for members to take it to the caucuses. So, all yes. members will then have, will see the input of of the EFF, and and on Tuesday we can then look at it as a committee and then deliberate on those proposals, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much. So there's been no opposition to us taking the reporters read. So if you can jump to the conclusions and let us work through that. Thank you. Uh, the two brilliant Chair. I'll ask Margaret to just say the concluding remarks of, of the ANC Chair. And then we just received, as the meeting started, the concluding remarks of the Democratic Alliance. So we didn't have a look at it in some procedural processes, but if Mark can share the- before the, 8 8.30, Andre. Coming, sorry? I sent them before 8.30, not when the meeting started. No, I only received, uh, there are some challenges with emails. I only received it popped up oh. as we were speaking. So oh. <laughs> but, yeah. but I received it, yeah. There were some it's, challenges with emails. So yeah, when, I can when you- I confirm that there is a, po a problem with the Parliament's emails. I'm sure mm -hmm. all members have received the notifications that the mails are not delivered. Okay. Yeah. Um, so no problem, Chair. Chair, okay. thank you. We if, we if we take the matter, we will go through the first um, concluding remark proposed by the African National Congress, Chair. Yes. It's on the screen. I will, will I read through it, Chair? Yes, please. You will, let's go uh, uh, one by one. No problem, Chair. Okay. The committee welcomed the positive impact of the investment pledges made since 20, 2018 as a result of the investment drive initiated by the President Raymond Posa with the completion of a number of projects such as the investment by Mercedes-Benz and SAPI. It would appear that the initial goal to raise 1.2 trillion investment over five years would most likely be exceeded with 1.1 trillion investment pledge today. The commitment by the DTIC to link investment pledges to actual investment projects is appreciated. However, it is critical that the pledges translate into actual investment and job created. Jobs created, Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can we see if there's uh, any discussion or I'll just see if there are hands, otherwise you can proceed. Proceed. Thank you, Chair. This is still a work in progress. Honorable Tswaku. Oh, sorry, Chair. I, I wanted to check, Chair, on the last sentence, it says that the digital pledge is a trend in actual investment. So does it mean that the, the, these pledges have not translated into investment and jobs now? That, that's the clarity I seek. ANC. Uh, thanks. I think we're in an agreement with uh, bullet number one. Hence, that is why we have uh, pledged as a proposal that we acknowledge the pledges made uh, to the Presidential Investment Committee. Thanks. I think the emphasis of on a point, yes. Okay, you can proceed. 
the committees of the view that both public and private sector investment is critical to drive the development of a country's economy and contributes to economic growth. Furthermore, investment by the public sector is essential as it promotes and facilitates economic growth for the creation, expansion and upgrading of public infrastructure. Therefore, the committee welcomes investment by government through its public sector entities that will contribute to the expansion and growth of the economy, thereby creating significant job opportunities. So, <laughs> Um, Chair Dr. Tswaku raised his hand. Oh, no, he didn't raise his hand. He's applauding. No, no, I didn't, I didn't applaud. <laughs> it, it was <laughs> clapping hands, yes. <laughs> no, so, uh, <laughs> no, no, Chair, I wanted to ask, are these, how are these concluding uh, remarks, are we going to frame them? Are we going to frame these as our conclusions of the committee? I'm just yes, interested. So, so, so you'll take the conclusions of the ANC, of the DA, the EFF, and then combine them, and how how this is, how this thing is going to happen? Yes, because that is exactly that how it will happen. But we will discuss with the committee, and we will agree on every point. So if there is something that the ANC has put down as their concluding remarks that you don't agree to, you can raise your objection to it. Similarly, when the other parties also, we're going to go through their. Uh, conclusions also one by one. Oh, and okay. It as a committee, yes. I, I, I think, I think I'm going to disagree in in point number two. I believe in 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 more public sector investments critical to drive development more than the thing is done than the than the private sector. But I see that the investment public sector is essential. Okay, yeah, but yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Number three. Chair, okay, number three. We can just go up more though. Notwithstanding the cost of the pandemic and the Russian Ukraine war, among other recent global phenomena, the South African economy has been suffering buffered by the pockets of industrial resilience that emerged during this time. The committee was of the view that the localization policy insisted in companies being able to expand their operations in this regard. The committee welcomed the fact that since 2019, localization focused on strategic industry defined by the capacity to be labor absorbing providers of critical goods or significant export earners. Just demonstrated the need to in intensify localization to circumvent the over reliance on imports and to create additional economic opportunities for SMEs. I see Can the hand of Honorable Tswaku. It's still raised from the previous time. And then, okay, you took it down. Then, Honorable Cuthbert. Thanks very much, Chair. I think that the DA's uh, opposition to state-led localization is well known, and we can't agree with this particular um, concluding remark on a principled basis, so please register our vote against this particular one, or rather our, you know, yes. dissent yeah. towards it. Thank you. Okay. Chair, that will be captured in the minutes, Chair. Then Thank I'll... you. Number Chief, four. Furthermore, the committee is encouraged by the DTIC's efforts to reduce red tape and eliminate corruption and the maladministration of projects, as this will improve the ease of doing business and ensure resource allocation efficiency to facilitate new entrants into the market and to promote economic growth and job creation. Members, Honorable Cuthbert, is that a legacy hand or you? I have another comment to Sorry, make. Chair, there was a legacy hand. My apologies. Okay, great. Chair, I'll proceed, Chair. The committee remain concerned of the economic impact of ongoing load shedding on the manufacturing sector. It welcomed the DTIC support to contribute to government's initiative to address the energy crisis, in particular, the recent financial support to companies manufacturing components for a new, new renewable energy supply. 
members. I don't see any hands. Number six. The revitalization of industrial parks is of vital importance to the committee as it views the development of industrial park as a key vehicle to promote and develop local and rural economies. However, there's a need to effectively maintain the infrastructure and allocate appropriate human and sufficient financial resources to ensure that they are able to attract and obtain investment, including financial incentives for SMEs investing in these parks. This requires a coordinated drive among national, provincial and local governments with particular focus on underdeveloped rural provinces. Members, no hands, number seven. Furthermore, the committee also welcomed the policy review underway on the role of the private sector in the ownership, management and operation of industrial parks, as this may improve the effectiveness, effectiveness of the industrial parks. No hands. Uh, I yes, see and Twaku unmuted. Yes, Honorable Twaku. Yeah. What is that uh, clause number seven say again? Coming to welcome the policy review. Sorry, can 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 someone oh, explain that? Chair, if I may, Chair, the the, yes, the minister in the ministers in response were indicating that there is a discussion of the role of private private the private sector with regard to to ownership and management of industrial parks. So it's a policy, policy discussion that's still underway and, it, 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 and the minister will report to the committee in the future to the outcome of this process, Chair. Because currently um, industrial parks is, 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 there's no private sector ownership at all in, in this. I don't know if Margo or if Fikwanda wants to add to that, Chair. Any additions from the team? Uh, no, Chi, uh, Andres covered as well, I believe. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. But... Madalani, did you want to add? Good. Sorry, Chi, uh, I muted as Margo was unmuting okay. as well. Um, wanted to say the same thing. I think Andres explained it uh, well. Thank okay. you, Chi. Thank you. Dr. Twako, I see your mic is still on. Oh, yeah, no, Chao, just saying that, uh, well, for me, I don't think that the thing that if, if we, you know, that the policy is that we think that the, 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 the state-led development and driving of the industrial park is key uh, because we know that the private sector, only what they do, they want to do profits. It's, it's more about profits and, um, and then uh, it's unlikely that they will uh, like uh, massively, uh, um, you know, uh, contribute on, on the job creation, but fine, the review can happen. But uh, in terms of really supporting the, the private sector to be the main drivers, uh, it's not the police of the EFF, okay. okay. But uh, just, okay. just wait to uh, what is agreement on that. Okay. Thank you. Sure, on Chair, it will be noted in the minutes, Chair. Thank you very much. Shall I proceed to number eight, Chair? Yes. The committee welcomed the programs made with regard to the auto green paper and acknowledged the need to source, to source funding for the implementation of this proposed policy. The completion of the process in the view of the committee is critical to position, to position South Africa's automotive manufacturing sector to remain sustainable given the transition into electro mobility solutions and technology. Any hands from members on that point? No hands, we may proceed. Chair, the committee encouraged the DTIC to finalize the draft policy proposals on measures to restrict and regulate trade in ferros ferrous and non-ferrous metals waste, scrap and semi-finished ferrous and non-ferrous metal products to limit damage to infrastructure and the economy to ensure certainty for the upstream and downstream industries. Mr. Cuthbert, Chair, raise your hand. 
Thank you, Chief. Just, a, just as a, a word of credit, I think this is a very well-crafted um, concluding remark. And uh, I agree with this one. Um, I don't think it holds a particular position, but I think it does, uh, you know, communicate the urgency with which this matter needs to be finalised. So I think that's that's a, a step, of, or shall I say, a stamp of approval from myself. Okay, thank you very much. Next okay. uh, point. The committee welcomed the establishment of the quick response team comprising officials from the Chinese embassy, the DTIC, SARS and ITAC to address illegal imports from China as this eroded domestic economic opportunities and, and the reindustrialization efforts, as well as slowing down socioeconomic improvements among the poor. Furthermore, the committee applauded the efforts by the DTIC that secured the reopening of the Chinese markets to South African oysters. Thank you. Any hands? No hands? Um, next point. The committee support the position that AGOA should be extended beyond 2025 and encourage the minister to secure South Africa's inclusion in any extension of AGOA. Thank you. Any hands? No hands? Agreed to. The Next committee was Sorry, the committee was concerned about the high levels of economic concentration in the economy, which is an impediment to structural transformation. In particular, it had been concerned about economic concentration in the real estate sector and encouraged the Competition Commission to consider whether there is a need to initiate a market inquiry in this regard. No hands. No hands, Chair. Yeah. Sorry, my hand, I struggled to um, well, put my hand up in that. Can you just go back to the, the concluding remark, please, Andre? It's number, it's number 12. Shall I repeat it? Yes, yeah, please, Andre. I can, so I can see it. Just go down, Margaret, Margot, so that we can see it. There we go. So I can see it right there. Yeah, there we go. 12. Number 11. Oh, no, 11 I'm comfortable with. I thought Andre had moved on oh. to 12. Oh, I think you were there, eh, Andre? It was 12, Chair. It was 12. Yeah, okay. Chair, I, I think personally we must be very cautious about, you know, over-regulating from a competition perspective and comp from a competition uh, commission perspective purely because... There's been a number of instances where I personally believe that the Competition Commission have misused the public interest clause in their legislation to overreach. So I would uh, I would pose my opposition to this one and if it can be registered as such, please. Thank you very much, duly noted. Number 13. Thank you, Chair. The committee welcomed the proposed shift in broad based black economic empowerment to focus on the empowerment of all workers and on black industrialists. It also recognized the need to place a greater emphasis on merit for strategic positions while growing the requisite technical skills and capabilities of all South Africans. Thank you, no hands. Okay, next point. The committee urged the minister to expedite the appointment process for the director, director general of the DTRC and the commissioner of ITEC. Sorry, Chair, I'm seeming to have a little bit of an issue with raising my hand. Okay, but you can just unmute, uh, Honorable Cuthbert. I will see Sorry. that you can mute it, so it's fine. Sure, just, just with regards to number 13, Chair, I mean, I think it's quite clear that we believe, uh, you know, in empowerment based on poverty and means testing, as opposed to race. So we will be opposed to that particular 13 as a concluding remark. Um, Thank you very much. Noted, Honorable Mulder. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, just for clarity uh, purposes, I'm not quite sure what actually is meant by 13. Um, if we read the committee, welcome the proposed shift in broad-based black economic empowerment to focus on the empowerment of all workers. Um, isn't that a contradiction? 
uh, and, on, and on black industrialists. Um, it also recognized the need to place a greater emphasis on merit for strategic positions, which I support while growing their requisite technical skills. Um, I'm not sure how the first two sentences of 13 could be understood. Isn't it uh, in contradiction with each other, the two sentences? Because on the one hand, it says it's a, a shift in broad-based Black economic empowerment. And on the other hand, it says it's focusing, focusing on the empowerment of all workers. I just want to clarify that, Jay. Thank you. OK, I see quite a few hands. Uh, Honorable Burns Namashi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Um, I think the issue here is about ensuring that uh, the broad-based uh, character uh, of the redress achieves the intended uh, outcome. But the question that I have uh, from uh, concerns expressed by Honorable Cuthbert, um, does he acknowledge the fact that we emerge from a history of black people who by law were excluded from uh, participating in the mainstream economy. And thus as part of creating an inclusive economy, which is a critical component of the transformational imperatives. These policies had to be put in place and they are still relevant because the economy is still largely in the hands of white minority. Is he having a problem with that? Thank you. Thank you. That is the ANC's response, Honorable Thring. Uh, Chair, no, thank you. I, I think that my reading of this is, and, and that would also need to be clarified, my, my reading of this, um, and the reason why I kept quiet is, is it was welcoming, uh, as the ACDP would welcome um, a, a shift in broad-based uh, black economic empowerment. Um, and that shift would then be to focus on the empowerment of all workers, which would include black industrialists, because black industrialists uh, would be included in the all. So, um, but that all um, focuses also on, on the other groups. And then it goes on and also speaks about recognizing the need uh, to place a greater emphasis on merit for, for strategic positions, which clearly I think if one looks at the Eskom uh, uh, saga and the and the Eskom uh, as as an example, Eskom as an example, um, there is now a recognition uh, that merit is actually needed uh, for for key state uh, programs um, and initiatives. So. So if I read it in that way, that there's now um, a shift uh, from the previous broad-based Black economic empowerment uh, to one that is now going to be more inclusive. Um, and by being inclusive, uh, after uh, some 28 years, 29 years, 28 to 29 years, 28 years um, of, of democracy in South Africa, um, one would think, and, and that's been our argument. As the ACDP, we've, we've had a sunset clause where initially we supported uh, the policies of affirmative action, broad-based Black economic empowerment, because we recognized the injustices of the past. But what we said as the ACDP, it cannot be in perpetuity, it cannot be forever. Uh, that then would just be a reverse um, a reversal of apartheid. Uh, so that's been our view. So if I'm wrong in terms of how I'm interpreting this, uh, then then I would like to be informed, uh, Chair. Thank you. 
Thank you, Honorable Cuthbert. Thanks very much, Chair. I mean, we're giving short responses to the proposed uh, concluding re uh, remarks, uh, just by virtue of the feature that there are several that we need to get through, but maybe just to expand on my opposition to it. If the recommendation had read, the committee welcomed the proposed shift in the focus on empowerment of all workers, and that's where the sentence stopped, I wouldn't necessarily have an issue with it, and whilst it, you know, recognizing merit. However, this seems to try and take two, you know, competing schools of thought and mix them into something that's, you know, a, a compromise in a way that, you know, makes it very unclear, and I think it leaves it very vague. And I think that it's a very good point that was raised by the Honorable Milder in terms of you have two competing ideas in the same sentence, possibly in the attempt to appease everyone, but it's not something that, you know, when it's got specific, uh, you know, racial categorizations linked to it, you know, makes it palatable in light of our view that we hold. Um, I don't think that we're going to get into any intense debates today, but if Honorable Burns would like me to send him a copy of our social justice uh, and economic justice policy to explain our position on it. I'm more than welcome, to, or he's more than welcome to it. And also to explain to him, which I think our leader in the house did uh, in a question to the president last week, to say that there's no one who denies the, uh, you know, disadvantages and the, you know, total uh, pain that people particularly of color had to go through during apartheid. However, trying to, you know, address this through race-based means uh, you know, has not been successful thus far uh, over the past 30 or so years. And we need to look at a mechanism that's able to lift people out of poverty, put them into jobs and create a better life for all. Uh, but if Honorable Burns would like to discuss it further, we can definitely take it off lunch. Okay. I'm sure you'll take you up on that um, invitation. Honorable Tswaku, I think uh, the committee secretariat is noting all the inputs from the various political parties. Um, Honorable Tswaku. No, thank you very much, Chair. Okay, point 13 makes sense. Uh, we are for the workers, uh, working class, and Blacks in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in particular. We must not sugarcoat this thing. We came to an aggressive past where Black people were excluded. And my honorable member there must, uh, must, must appreciate that and know it. We came to a brutal, terrible uh, history. And we're still suffering even on this day because the economy of this country is on the hands of the few, the 10% few and the majority of black people. They're not, they're, their economy and the land is still not with them. So we, we need to push this thing. I, I like the fact that now, it must be, you know, more for the workers, not for the some black elite that will be contributed, like, you know, that will benefit onto the, this thing. Maybe it was a mistake that was done before in terms of really concentrating on this managerial uh, components of, of PE and, and all of stuff like that. We, we, we know this thing, Chair, because I, I, I see some of my friends, you know, my white friends, actually they don't know this thing that even those who are educated, uh, we come from the private sector, Chairperson, and we know what we're talking about. If these affirmative actions and all these laws were not there, we're not going to be promoted because the white people, they're promoting themselves there. We, 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 we know it, we lived it. And it's just that the reality that they don't want to, to accept. And even our friends, we studied, I mean, after these riots and all of that, we finished our schools in the in our schools, whatever any problem, these are friends. We we know we we did, you know, we were sleeping in the houses and, and they're our best friends that we know. But the fact of the matter is that these injustices, they seem not to appreciate and know about it because it's a hush hush. So my own my my colleague there, Mr. Honorable uh, you know uh, Cutbeth, it's a reality that the black still needs to be empowered. We still need our land. We still need the economy to be in their hands, uh, you know, to be distributed. Even this what I've been fighting into this community that we are, uh, uh, we are pussyfooting around issues at times. We just need to go and, and ensure that the economy of this country is it's, 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 it's actually showing the demographics of this country. Currently, it's not. So, so even these uh, things that now we are hearing that this baby 
uh, this economic empowerment of the black people must, must, must stop. But what is that? They want to check. So, I mean, I, I believe that we should. Race still plays a role in because we are poor because we're black that time. We were, we were actually segregated or we were, uh, well, what, do, what do I say what I'm looking for? We were, uh, uh, thing is, um, we were disadvantaged because of the color of our skin. The, 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 the problem was the color of our skin. And for years, 300 and something plus years, we were disadvantaged. There was a job reservation for a long time. Even they built when a chair, what you call the these state-owned old entities like Abu Sasol, Abu Nexa, you know them, Dinel, and all of that. Those were built so that they can they can actually empower the white Afrikaner. Now, if we want to do it now, and this I said, we must have a state-led approach in terms of industrialization and development of a blacks, colors, and all of that, all those were disadvantaged. Now, oh, no, 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 private sector, private sector. No, it cannot be like that. I think that uh, it's fine that that close as it is. Uh, you know, I appreciate the, 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 all the workers. Remember also, Chair, that we should also empower uh, uh, white females because white females are not, uh, you know, also they actually been disadvantaged because we had a, 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 a black, sort of, you had white males, which are the, the captains of the industries. So white women, we must also maybe even include them in terms of, they also need to be empowered uh, in, 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 into this. Maybe not a, a, a thing is, you know, like, like, but at least, but in particular, and the main focus would be blacks, but we know that also white women, uh, and they were also, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, disadvantaged in terms of ownership or maybe to be in, in the in, in the strategic positions of the economy as well. No, thank you very much. That is my input. Okay, it's two more hands, uh, Honorable Malamacha and then Honorable Cuthbert. Honorable Malamacha. Thank you, Chair. I think we must not make mistakes of pretending not to understand what it is that we are trying to address here. The very same intended black industrialists, we haven't arrived to a number that can satisfy and justify why are we in, in power. We are in power through the process of democracy where majority are voted in. They can at any given time implement any policy without backing those who are left Howard. Now, because we are in a true democratic South Africa where we are trying to accommodate each other, by, by accommodating, we must not forget that there is an, a bigger agenda that we need to deal with it, where there was injustice, where the economy was in the hands of the few who are still even today not necessarily willing to share. And until we share equally, there's no way we are not going to blame the Afghan apartheid that we are only that Yes, in power. Now, time and again, we want to know who are the architects and the owners of this apartheid. And everybody, including the DA, they are saying, no, apartheid is not our policy. We were not there. We never implemented our poli apartheid policies. But when we want to deal with apartheid, it's like they are defenders of apartheid. People, we've, feel, we've felt it. We know how deep is it. And we even now feeling the impact of that apartheid. So allow us to exercise what we think it will assist. And it's true. Not to say all of the whites enjoyed the apartheid or benefited in the apartheid. Yes, there are those who never benefited. And when we deal with our policy, it covers everybody. So that we will be scared that if we are to debate deeper, it's like it will reveal other things. No, actually what we want the architect of apartheid to come up so that we are able to question that. Have you, can you see what we have done to our lives? We, we can't if perhaps we are going to massage this week, but comrade must be ready to accept that we are doing little to try and accommodate everybody in South Africa and stop politicizing other things. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Cuthbert and Honorable Mulder. 
Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Chair, I appreciate the attempts by the members to lecture me. Uh, however, I am myself a student of political science, history, public policy, so I'm well versed in what happened and I acknowledge what happened in the past. And I do think it should be readdressed, as I said earlier. However, what would have maybe been a, a more authentic concluding remark coming from the ANC would to be that we do support race-based policy and black economic empowerment and the DA you know, from a practical level would have opposed that particular concluding remark as I have with others that have come before and then it wouldn't have gone into a debate but it seems that there's an attempt to posture by members and if that's what they want to do then they're welcome to do so and no matter how much they say it, they're not going to change my mind in the sense that I believe that we should have needs-based empowerment and that it must be far broader than what the current system allows for which is to enrich you know the elite at the expense of the poor so I mean it's fine and well that we can posture here, and I'm not sure if there's any media on the meeting this morning or watching in. Um, however, that's not going to change my view. I think we can simply move on, register the DA's opposition to this, and it will be detailed in the minutes why that is the case, and then we can get on with the business of the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I think Honorable Mbuyani's hand will be the last hand I'll take. Uh, we note the uh, comments I, by the I, 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 I also raised the hand, Chair. Yes, I see. I'm, I'm not sure whether Mr. Mbuyani's hand came up after yours. So I was saying, let's make that the last hand. I see Honorable Mulder took his hand down because I, I'm saying that we will note the comments uh, in summary of all the political parties on this point. Honorable um, Ben Amashe. Honorable Chair, sorry, um, I only removed my hand because uh, you Oh, recognize. I acknowledge it. Okay, so first Honorable Mulder and then Honorable Ben Amashe and then Honorable Mbiani. Honorable Thank Mulder. You. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thanks for the opportunity. I think we should all be... Um, uh, I have to be very, very patient about this, this whole situation. The, what I actually raised was the fact that there was two contradictory comments made in, in paragraph 13, and that's actually the main issue. Two, two um, questions or issues that actually contradicts each other, and Cuthbert also uh, acknowledged that and pointed it out. So I think it's important that we just rectify that paragraph um, because as it stands there, it actually is, 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 is a contradiction. I think we should be careful to get involved in, in conversation of, of the past and the future because the Freedom Front Plus believes that the only way in which people could be empowered is if we grow the economy and we should grow the economy in the best way that possibly makes business sense um, without any political intervention. That's the only way that the economy will grow and that people will really be empowered. Um, we're not gonna talk about state capture and all the trillions that's been lost there and all the people who could have been empowered, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what paragraph 13 is about. It's about the fact that there is contradiction in two thoughts in the one, sense is that um, the shift in broad-based black economic empowerment to focus on the empowerment of all um, and on black industrialists and on the other side then greater emphasis on merit. We should really rephrase it as Honorable Cuthbert said, put it in the one way or the other way and if a certain party doesn't agree then we could oppose it. Thank you Honorable Chair. Thank you. Um... Taking note that these are the conclusions of the African National Congress. I think um, we note your, your statement, but unless the ANC agrees to change it, I think that is how it stands. Uh, I mean, the Freedom Front Plus would be welcome to submit a conclusion also. Honorable Burns, Namashe. No, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and honorable members. <clears throat> you know, sometimes, uh, honorable chairperson, um, we prefer to be accommodative to our own detriment. 
such that at times, even during debates in the House, you can witness the level of arrogance and impunity with which black people of South Africa are treated. I don't think che, it's something that we must tolerate forever. This, this, this attitude of condescending and gaslighting is not acceptable. The kind of history from which we emerge, maybe Honorable Cuthbert may not be sensitive to that because of his age. We know exactly what it means to be under a white rule in an apartheid system. So I want to urge I want to urge very seriously that our colleagues who are interested in building an inclusive economy, who are committed to the spirit of reconciliation, must count what they say. They must really count what they say. It's very important. When we say we want an inclusive economy, it is because we want to address the past injustices that were inflicted by their own people against our own forebears. So that is the reality. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It is the fact. So Chair, please. We must not be pushed too much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mbiyani. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for the opportunity. I think, Chair, on this one, we have to put it clear because this is a uh, concluding remarks for the ANC. All parties were given uh, a space to submit. But the parties uh, chooses not to submit their concluding remarks and come here, they want to grandstand about our past. And now what we're saying as an ANC, uh, triple B, -E, it's our policy. And now we're shifting the focus to empower the workers because they are the ones that they are building this economy, that those beneficiaries of the past, they are now uh, uh, celebrating. They don't, no, they don't want us to transform the economy so that it's inclusive, so that anyone in South Africa who is working for this economy should benefit. They want to us to remain on that legacy of apartheid that we cannot do. So as an ANC, we are saying we want to empower all workers uh, as part of the triple P proposal and also black industrialists so that they form part of the inclusive economy of the South African. And also, Che, coming here and grandstand about the science and so forth, it cannot assist us here. That is what we submit as an ANC. If you want to submit as an EFF+, plus, you will submit and an and NDA, and so that when we deal with these issues of consideration, we'll therefore discuss and look at each other as proposal in terms of this matter, but coming here and want us to uh, relinquish our uh, our policies, uh, it's, it's not going to assist us. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Honorable Mboyani, it's FF plus, not EFF plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, <sir>. <laughs> Please, <laughs> man. <laughs> Uh, Honorable Cuthbert, I wanted to close off with Honorable Mboyani. I see your hand is up. If I may, just a short input, Chair. I really think, and I don't want to lecture to another caucus on the committee, but if they just allowed the whip to actually speak first, 
it would make life so much easier. I think he's very right in saying it's an ANC recommendation. If other parties wanted to put concluding remarks, like the DA did, I put my concluding remarks. I'm sure we'll discuss those later on. But if we are opposed to it, let us, you know, register our vote against it, and then we can move on with the business. But uh, we had to, you know, be subjected to soliloquies by Honourable Burns and Honourable Malamecha. If they just deferred to the whip and allowed the whip to actually handle this, I think we would have actually saved ourselves the debate. I think all our views on these matters are very well established. We ventilated them in the briefing we had with the minister last week. And I think we're dealing, you know, with some procedural business here. So let's get moving with the business of that. Thank you. But every member has a right, uh, Honourable Kafka, to make their voice heard. But we take your point. Can we move on now to number 14? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the committee urged the, the minister to expedite. We've completed this also, but I'll re repeat it, Chair. To expedite the appointment process, sorry, for the Director General of the DTIC and the Commissioner of ITAC. Yeah, we've dealt with this one. Yeah. So in at number 15 now. Yeah. The committee welcomed the progress made in the forensic investigation initiated okay, by Yes, hold on. I see Honourable Cuthbert's hand. Is that on 14, Honourable Cuthbert? Yes, it is, Chair. Okay. Okay. Just to say, and look here, a little bit of compromise to my ANC colleagues. We submitted a similar um, as a recommendation. I'm not sure if it's better placed as a recommendation or a concluding remark, and I'll just ask the Secretary to assist with that. But I'm quite happy for us to forego our one in that respect, and then for us to stick with 14, because it pretty much covers the same point. Um, Chair, I had a quick look at the, the, the DA's um, proposals, Chair. It's best place at, at, as a concluding remark, Chair, and it's a similar, I think you, you, you will probably concur with 14 as 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 yeah. could you. Incorrect, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Okay, I think we can move on to 15. Chair, the committee welcomed the progress made in the forensic investigation initiated by the minister and the SIU into allegations of corruptions and maladministration involving the NLC. It also welcomed the preservation orders obtained by the SIU in an attempt to recover the stolen funds that has been meant for the upliftment of the poor. The committee was encouraged by the significant changes underway at the NLC and welcomed the appointment of the new chairperson, Dr. Kiana, and other board members who have a strong governance record. I don't see any hands. Number six. Oh, there's a hand from Dr. Tswaku and Honorable Cuthbert. Chair? Sure. I wanted to check, man. Um, I put in a an input there on that point on the forensic investigation on the SIU to say that um, we had some reservations because they were acting on on the reports that were not sent to the president and finalized, and they were still ongoing. So I don't know about how can I. Like, you know, because I had some reservations in terms of because we wanted them to finish this report, get signed by the president, and then start like you know to 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 to, to act. Um yeah, so I don't know how can I talk I can I chuffed it in, in, in into this. That was the the reservation I had in terms of this. Um on, on that. Those are the reservations I had. Um I was not pleased in terms of them just you know going uh uh, after people without finalizing a report because finalization it means that it's concluded and also there were some people that were never that the people actually who were implicated on those reports they are not been given a chance to come and account so i had a problem i reserved this uh, clause there i have some reservation on it but of course the money must be uh, you know recovered i agree for the upliftment of the poor, and uh, and also on that other last line, the appointment of the of the seventy eight year old, uh, you know, Doctor Pipikian. I mean, why would you not actually take someone that is young and new, competent, and all of that? So the recycling of the old guard. So also has some reservation on on, on that. 
your comments are noted and you are free to make a recommendation, uh, concluding remark of the EFF and submit it as you said you were going to do. Honorable Cuthbert. Thanks very much, Chair. Chair, I can agree with this recommendation. Up until it says Dr. Pityana, I don't share the same concerns as Honorable Twaki. Well, I think it's good to have young blood in an organization, being only 29 myself. I don't think that uh, you know age is necessarily indicative of competence. And if you're still competent and sound at that age and wanting to do a job like that instead of enjoying your life traveling, then you know that is your, your free will to choose. However, I am still concerned about the minister's representative who has not responded to allegations that were leveled against him. Now, those need to obviously be tested. However, I think that considering the work that has been done since the new uh, leadership, as well as executive have been appointed, that does need to be clarified before I could agree to something like that. So there's two options here. I can you know, uh, approve uh, in line with the ANC's uh, concluding remark here. Um, if it ends at Dr. Pityana, but um, or just a broader statement on and leadership, but I won't agree with other board members until that uh, allegation is cleared up by Mr. Lubisi himself. Thank you very much. That's noted. And the um, next uh, concluding remark, I think it's the last one. Eh? I think so, Chair. If you just go down. No, there's more. The committee was of the view that the absence of a permanent chief executive officer and a board contributed to the ongoing challenges facing the SABs. It was concerned that this may contribute to it not being able to strategically deliver on its mandate to develop standards in the industrial priority sector and offer compliance assurances, assurance services. Therefore, the committee urged the ministry to urgently address the appointment of members of the board. I see no hands. You can go to number 17. Chair, this is number 17. The committee welcomed the improvement of the NRC's audit outcome in the 2021 22 financial year to an unqualified audit with findings. This represents significant progress in addressing the challenges around estimating its levy revenue, which has resulted in qualified audit outcomes over the previous financial years. Okay, let's go to the Democratic Alliance. Um, Chair, um, Mr. Cuthbert and the Democratic Alliance proposed uh, the committee did not receive an answer to a request for status update on the SADC EU EPA between SA and the EU. This is concerning on the trade agreement it is our most significant trading relationship in terms of overall RAND value. And if I may share, so I'll be, I'll be led by your chair. Continue. Okay, do you want to, do you have a comment on the first recommendation? I mean, the first concluding remark? Members? Chair? Is this a concluding remark? Tim, I will, I will maybe um, um, suggest that we look at it and, and maybe paraphrase it and forward it back to Mr. Cuthbert if, if he's okay. to ensure that, that the essence of what he's saying is captured. If we can go in that way like we normally do, then okay. um, we will then in include it in the, in the, in the report. For, then we can still look at it at the next meeting if Mr. Yes. Cuthbert is fine with that. Honorable Cuthbert. I'm happy for the Secretariat to do that, Chair. I just want to raise uh, one issue related to this concluding remark. And this is the fact that you will see on the draft report we received this morning, it's highlighted because we did not receive a response to that question. And I think that we've raised it at an earlier stage as well. And this is maybe a bit of programming business, but indulge me if you will. Um, I do think it's important that uh, the Trade Directorate come in brief the committee on this issue and explain to us exactly what has happened because the information that I have is that there's not been much progress on this uh, between the two parties. And I, I think that it's important that this is finalized considering the economic impact that it may have. 
no, that's fine. And it seems like there's no opposition to that. So we'll let the committee secretariat uh, check um, the wording and how we'll place it then un under the concluding remarks. Next Chair, one. Uh, Chair, we address number two already in terms of one of the ANC uh, um, uh, is covered there, Chair, in his recommendations, Chair. Um, um, I will also, um, if, if you can just go right straight more down, Margot. I think there's more than one. Chair, the, um, there's a recommendation that the department must develop a st strategy and implementation plan, which allows for better use of the tariff line concessions contained with a GOA agreement in order to come in order to complement the high trade value volume in the automotive sector, department should look at ways of expanding agricultural exports to the US market. Chair, I will also request that we look at that to see if there's procedural order in terms of recommendations and propose a redraft if Mr. Cuthbert is in is is okay with that. Um, Chair. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. I'm happy with that. I just want to also add uh, one substantiating point to this is just to say that if you look at what we benefit from a GOA, the top five tariff lines that are used are all automotive exports. And there's a lot of underutilization of other, uh, you know, tariff concessions that we have. And if we we're going to lobby to have this agreement extended and for our inclusion in it, then I think that our economic strategy needs to be geared in part towards making sure that we maximize the use of all of those uh, tariff line concessions. Otherwise, we've agreed upon an agreement that we are not taking full advantage of. And I think that's in every party's interest to want to achieve that. Yeah, I don't think there can be opposition to that point. That's fine. Chair, yes. and then but, the second one, Chair, if I might say, yeah. Chair. Sorry, okay. Dr. No, I wanted to, to check my chair. Like, uh, the, I will not maybe trying to put a point there that there must be a renegotiation of these uh, low tariffs that we put at some point there. Uh, because okay, those high tariffs, uh, if we renegotiate these tariffs and, 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 and put them a bit higher so that that will actually scientifically stimulate what you want to achieve in number two, which is the localization of your economy. Should we not, maybe not number one, they say that we try and negotiate for renegotiate those uh, tariff lines that were agreed over 1994 and relook at them so that we're able to, 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 you know, to, 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 to stimulate localization. Uh, sorry, that's the Democratic Alliance uh, input. So we'll note what you are saying as EFF on uh, the Democratic Alliance input. Chair. Uh, Ms. Sheldon. Chair, I just want to clarify, a GOA is a legislation by the US administration. So these tariff line concessions that Mr. Cuthbert and the DA is referring to is into the US. It's not on our side. It's us exporting to them. So what we pay when we export to them or when they import from us. So um, it's not that it is implemented on our side, as far as I understand. It's not imports. No, so it would be Export. our exports to the US and the how much we pay for those when we when we export to them. Oh, okay. It must be lower then. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Honorable Cuthbert, did you want to say something? Chair, I must say for for uh, Honorable uh, <laughs> Tswaku or uh, Doctor Honorable Tswaku, however you would like to be referred to, who is a you know a natural scientist, I think of note by virtue of his PhD. I think that speaks for itself. Um, what he said from an economic scientist's point of view is not very scientific. I think Margot has explained it in part, and a number of these tariff line concessions imply that we land goods there, uh, you know, at a minimal rate or for nothing. Um, and when you have an agreement like this with the USA or with the SADC EU EPA, for example, a number of them contain what they call developmental concessions. So it implies because they are a more developed economy than what we are, we get more out of the deal because they understand our need to stimulate the economy, grow our economy in order to be able to become competitive. So, yeah, 
Um, it is a, a piece of legislation that is voted upon by Congress and not necessarily a trade agreement. However, we would have an agreement as a part of being participants in the program. And we are obviously reliant on the fact that uh, the Congress that will decide upon this in 2025 will need to vote in favor. It's not necessarily a trade negotiation tool that we can necessarily negotiate over like, you know, the SADC EU EPA for example. Thank you, Honorable Cuthbert. You want to follow up, Honorable Tswaku? Yes, Chair. No, anything that uh, is going to lower that if we, if we uh, import to, to them, they are going to uh, it is going to be uh, on, on our on, on our side in terms of that. Then I welcome it. It's fine. It must uh, they, they must not charge us a lot when we import. Sorry, man. When we export, because we want yeah. to export to, to them, so they must not make that those in, 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 in export rates to be very high. Whatever that agoa is, and so okay, um, no, that, that's fine. I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy with, with that. So okay, thank you. Number two. Um. Okay. Number two, the department should provide the committee with the quarterly metrics of the impact of localization on the economy, i.e. contribution to GDP, impact on prices and jobs created as a result of this policy choice. Chair, I think the similar principle will apply, Chair, because we need to look at whether this, these are recommendations or is best suited for um, as concluding remarks, and we will advise accordingly, Chair. Okay, so you'll check the procedural uh, parameters. Yes. Honourable Chair, I'm partially happy with that. However, what I do believe is that it was an admission made by the minister when I asked him the question last week, and it's purely with relation to the data that we are provided with as a committee. I think if we put it in as a recommendation, it's more binding in the sense that they would then have to, on a quarterly basis, make sure that all of that information is collated through the economic research unit and provided to members, because I just think it gives us a better idea of whether or not an actual policy is successful. Um, so I would like to keep that particularly as a recommendation because I think it's an action step that needs to be taken by uh, the department. And I think we are well within our rights as a committee to request that of the minister and for him to consider it as a recommendation from the committee. Thank you. Can we allow the, the, yes. the secretariat to, to look at the procedural aspects. Committee Secretary? Chair, just in light of that, we will look at it because there are procedural processes regarding recommendation, Chair, uh, and, and we will advise accordingly, Chair, regarding that. And the committee will then have to decide on the way forward regarding that, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much. So that concludes inputs received so far. We'll await the um, the recommendations or concluding remarks from other parties uh, before we look at the formal adoption of the report uh, next Tuesday. Thank you. Can we go to the next agenda item? Chair, just to, com com to, to complete your process, Chair, is that we will capture the recommendations and concluding remarks of the EFF and of the consultation with Mr. Cuthbert, the other matters in the, uh, the cleaner version of the report chair. And that report, we will assume members will take it to the respective caucuses on Thursday. And then the committee will conclude its business on the report next Tuesday morning, chair. Thank you. Uh, do you know Cuthbert, when it's serving in the house? Chair, the, um, I check the order, but you not order paper, the program that didn't indicate specifically that it's on this particular day. Hopefully at Thursday's meeting, the program committee may then indicate which okay. when committees will, which committee will debate on which day, Chair, thanks. Thank you, Honorable Casper. Thanks, Chair. Um, the first issue being obviously that we reserve our right, uh, you know, to take a position on the report until we discuss it in our caucus, just to have that recorded, please. And then the second issue is, uh, and through you, Chair, if I may, to the uh, whip of the ANC, um, were everything, everything that we had discussed from the ANC submission, was that merely concluding remarks? Um, or were the recommendations there? Because I didn't see a, a, a separation between the two. And if, if, if they were just concluding remarks, can we be expecting recommendations forthcoming from the ANC? Or is that not something that they are considering at this stage? Honorable Mbiani? 
Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, I think for now we we submitted uh, the concluding remarks as an ANC, and we are fine with it. Okay. If yes, uh, we still need to submit uh, we uh, concluding. I mean, uh, recommendation. We can do that because we still have uh, two recommendations that were submitted by the opposition. So in the process, that means we have to at least have uh, uh, recommendations as well that will be clouded uh, with those that were submitted by the opposition. Uh, thanks. It will be put together. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank so you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, we'll proceed with outstanding minutes that we, of September of, of, of last quarter, Chair. Um, if we can, Margaret can, can flag those, Chair. I think at the last meeting, when we, in, just before the recess, we, we, we finished at the 6th of September, so we will look at 7th September now, is where we had the briefing by the DTIC, the IDC, and the EF, NEF on the funding application and, and adjudication processes, as well as on the aftercare services chair. If we go down, Margot. Chair, we have all of those in, it is the, just the introductory uh, um, 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 sec, section chair, and followed by the briefing by the IDC, DTIC, NEF on the funding application and the issues captured by the raised by members are captured in under point two. If Marvin just go down. As indicated, these are the issue points raised by members and from 2.4 downwards, Chair. If Marvin can just go down. It's quite a number of issues. There's the committee resolved that the DI should submit in writing the update and just justification for the NAFC or salary and bonus and for ID to submit a written response in relation to the funding of school metals. Then we dealt with committee business. Um, the committee requested we submit names of possible experts to facilitate the workshop industrial policy. Uh, committee informed that the EFF submitted names for consideration. It was Professor Bond, Professor Malakani, Chairperson Inigat Mimi should submit name for management committee's consideration. The meeting adjourned at 12.25 until Tuesday the 13th of September. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Can we have a move and a second for the adoption of these minutes of the 7th of September? Please. Ms. Mwatsi, Chair. Honorable Mwatsi. Chairperson, for minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Motaung. Thanks, Chair. I second the adoption of the minutes. Thank you very much. So the minutes are duly adopted as a true reflection of the meeting of the 7th of September. Next minute. Chair, next minute, I think it's the 13th of September, Chair. Chair, the agenda for that day was a briefing by the DTIC on the status of the implement, implementing the Intellectual Property Laws Amendment Act, the National, National Credit Amendment Act, and the Protection of Investment Act and the Legal Metrology Act. We also received a briefing by the DTIC on the status of the review process with regard to the Consumer Protection Act and the National Gambling Act. Chair, we go down. We have an apology during the time from you, Chair. So the meeting was chaired by Mr. Mbiani. Chair, that is just introductory on number one. Number two, speaks to the briefing by the department and the details on the status of the legislation. The minister led that discussion. Deputy Minister Majola led that the, the briefing. Then that was followed by um, Dr. Masocha who proceeded to sp speak on the Consumer Protection Act and the National Gambling Act, and which was go down, which followed, was followed by deliberations. 
if you go down at column four, and then the meeting adjourned at 11.42 until Wednesday, the 27th of September, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much. Can we have a move and a seconder for the adoption of these minutes of the 13th of September? Members? Ms. Mohatse, Chair. Honorable Mohatse. Uh, Chair, I move adoption of the set minutes. Thank you. Can we have a seconder for the adoption of the minutes? Members, can we have a seconder for the adoption of the minutes? Mr. Mbuyani, Chair. Honorable Mbuyani. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I second that we adopt the said minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The minutes of the 13th of September, duly adopted. Can we have the next set of minutes? Chair, the next set of minutes is on Wednesday, the 21st of September, Chair. We received a briefing by the Limpopo Economic Development Agency on the development and plans for the Shishekho and Nkongwanko Kowankowa Industrial Parks and briefing by the Repopo Department of Economic Development and Environment and Tourism on development and plans for the Messina Machado Special Economic Zone, Chair. We had apologies from yourself and Mr. McPherson during this period, Chair. Then number one is the introductory um, um, input, Chair. Going to number two, was a briefing by Mr. Mokana and Mr. Makuva on by the Lumpopo Development Agency on the development of the industrial park, which was followed by the Lumpopo Department of Economic Development, Environment and Tourism on the development plans, development and plans for the Messina Mokado SEZ. And that was also led by Mr. Mokona, Mr. Masoha, and Mr. Lakota. In addition, Mr. Hopong also put a brief the committee on the Fit Tacoma and Tubatse SEZ. That was followed by deliberations. If you go down, which is chapter in point four. The committee business that we, we made announcement that the rules committee has agreed to the name change for the committee. It was captured in the ATC of the 8th of September. We are now formally known as Trade, Industry and Competition, the PC on Trade. The meeting adjourned at 11.52 until the 27th of September, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Can we have a move and a second for the adoption of the minutes of the 21st of September? Honorable Motawung. Thanks, Chair. I move for adoption of the said minutes. Thank you very much. Honorable Motawu, can we have a second for the adoption of the minutes, please? Honorable Moatse. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairperson. I second the adoption of the said minutes. Thank you very much. The minutes are duly adopted of the 21st of September. Next set of minutes. Chair, the next set of minutes is the 27th of September, Chair. We, um, the agenda item here was introduced to, to the chairperson of the board of the NLC as well as new members of the board. We also received a briefing by the SIU on, on the investigation delegations of maladministration and corruption at the NLC. And we received the response from the DTIC and the NLC with respect to the presentation by the SIU with regard to these investigations. Chair, we go down. We heard Mr. Mbiani was uh, receiving an apology, Mr. Biani on the day chair, and Mr. Mulder. The number one is just the, the introductory um, input, and then um, the minister introduced the new board and the NLC, followed by the SIU status report chair. I think we three and four is just speaking to the SIU and the DTIC process. If we go to deliberations, is matters of possibility. We just have to unhighlight the yellow part.
Then we go down chain. The meeting adjourned at 1332 until 28th of September, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Moatsi, your hand is up. Are you proposing adoption of the minutes? Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. I move for adoption of the minutes. Thank you very much. Can we have a second? Can we have a second for the adoption of the minute, Honorable Mbuyani? Thank you very much, Chairperson. I second the proposal for the adoption of the said minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The minutes are duly adopted. Uh, the minutes of the minutes, yeah. 28th of September, we receive a briefing by the DTIC on the implementation of, and stakeholders on the implementation of the master plan for the furniture industry. We considered the fourth quarter program and considered minutes, Chair. If you go down. Apologies, Chair. Uh, we had apologies of Mr. McPherson and Mr. Biani for that meeting, Chair. Chair, we were briefed by DTRC and stakeholders on the rotation on the master plan for the South African furniture industry. Briefing was led by Mr. Minister Patel and also uh, Mr. Lunga, Mr. Dias, and Mr. Van Rienden um, in support of the master plan. Members raised a number of issues during that process, Chair. We go down. We did the committee business where we considered the program, Chair, and we considered minutes up till the 6th of September, Chair. We go down. And the meeting concluded, I think, at 11.59 until the 11th of October. Thank you very much, Honorable Malamacha. I saw your hand was up. Do you want to propose adoption of the minutes? Thank you, Chair. I propose we adopt this meeting. Thank you, Honorable Moatse. Thank you, Chair. I second. Thank you very much. The minutes are duly adopted. The minutes of the 28th of September. Are there any further minutes, uh, Committee Secretary? Chair, not for today, Chair. Okay. We will do the other minutes in the following weeks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, so can we just ask you to take us to our next meeting before we conclude this meeting? No problem, Chair. Our next meeting, we will consider uh, the, we'll be brief, just give me, just go to the program, Chair, by ITAC and CIPC on the 2021-22 annual report which include its first quarter financial and non-financial performance for the 2022-23 financial year. Chair, we have distributed the presentations yesterday already to members, so members sh should have the presentations for tomorrow's meeting already, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. The meeting is uh, adjourned. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Malibu. 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 Thanks to you. Thanks to Recording stopped. <laughs>